NASCAR says electrification is coming. Electrification is coming to NASCAR, maybe in 2026, maybe in 2027. It's not what you think, and NASCAR's racing development officer, John Probst, talked to SiriusXM on Thursday and mentioned that a hybrid unit could be introduced to the Cup Series in 2026 or 2027. And before I have to talk all the Facebook boomers off the ledge like I'm a San Francisco police officer at the Golden Gate Bridge, just relax. Because right now, the hybrid component that they want to put on the cars that's not a bad thing it's not full ev it's not what they tested at the la coliseum it's not what spotter brett freaks out about on the internet all the time this is just a hybrid component right think about what formula one has think about what indycar might have this season mid-season if they decide to introduce it and throw an absolute wild card into their series that's what nascar is going to but john also mentioned the fact that he spoke in hypotheticals about a new OEM coming into the series. And he said if a new OEM were to join, which obviously Honda has been heavily rumored about it at this point. I mean, it's so heavy. It's like a sixth grade romance at this point. You're like, we we understand you guys are flirting. Let's just go ahead and make it public. And obviously Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic said that the discussions haven't gone any further than discussions at this point. And we'll see. But John Probst speaking again and hypothetical said if a new OEM, a new manufacturer wanted to join by say 2026, they would have to get those conversations underway and start working in development this summer. 2026 seems like a pretty tight timeline, right? We're talking about a little over 18 months at this point, and that's just maybe not feasible, probably not feasible, but coming in as a new manufacturer in 2026 is way different than when Toyota did it because right now it's basically a spec chassis, right? So you can just call up Delar and be like, we need more chassis and they're going to get them for you. Same with the bodies. You have to, of course, get your body approved. A lot of it comes down to your engine, right? So NASCAR said if a new OEM were to come in and say 2026, more reasonable 2027, that fits their timeline for the next engine platform for the Cup Series. And this is where a lot of people might freak out because gone are the days of carburetors when we went to EFI, electric fuel injection. Also could be gone the days of the V8 in the future. Now listen, I'm a purist. I want big pushrod V8s. I want them to thunder around the racetrack. I like naturally aspirated. Having said that, obviously every OEM that is in the Cup Series right now or potentially could come in are really getting away from V8s. They're killing their V8, at least in their road cars, and moving into whether that be the twin turbo V6, single turbo V6, twin turbo four cylinders, whatever. But you know Ford would love for their drivers to get out in victory lane and talk about how great the power was from their EcoBoost engine during that race because that's the engine that they're pushing on literally everybody. You buy a Mustang, you have to, well, you don't have to, but they really push the EcoBoost engine on you. Buy an F-150, they push the EcoBoost on you. You buy anything, they want it to be EcoBoost. So of course, they would love to be able to promote that in the Cup Series and they can't right now because it's a naturally aspirated V8 and it's not EcoBoost. So there's a ton of marketing available there for the OEMs that they were get to get away from the V8s. Now, they're not getting away from the V8s in 2026 and not in 2027 either. There's still going to be opportunity. And what NASCAR really wants to do is just plug in that hybrid component to their basically current engine formula. Think about what they have in the Cadillacs in the GTP series and IMSA and how it sounds like an absolute hellhound, like the gates of hell open when it switches from that electric motor and pit lane over to the internal combustion engine and it lets out that huge roar. That's what they want for the Cup Series. And when the Gen 7 car was introduced, and of course it first ran in 2022 and then, you know, so on, the idea was to implement this hybrid power unit by 2024 or this season. That didn't happen, clearly, because they're still running naturally aspirated V8s, which is, again, totally fine for the rest of us. But that timeline's been pushed out, whether it be supply chain issues, whether it be people dragging their feet, the Gen 7 chassis is set up to hold that hybrid component. Now, if they push it back until 2027, they're taking a page out of Roger Penske's IndyCar right here and just kind of kicking the can down the road. I don't have a problem with that because, you know, whatever. I think the racing's good as it is now. Is the hybrid component really going to change things that much? It's going to add more horsepower, potentially, depending on how they want to use it. Um, but I don't think it's going to change the racing that much. It's going to add more weight, too, which will be interesting to see. So I say all of that to try to quell some of the nerves here, because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to be happy about the fact that, one, a hybrid 
component is coming to the series. And two, that the the lifespan of the V8 could you know, quickly be approaching the end of it and being sunset in favor of a V6, of course. Obviously, what we see in IMSA right now is a combination. You have V6 twin turbos, you have naturally aspirated V8s, and they all kind of work together. And of course, there's a balance of power. Could they have that in NASCAR? Could there be multiple different engine formulas? Sure. Is that something NASCAR wants to explore? I don't know. Who knows at this point? They could do it, but that would also more than likely introduce the dreaded BOP term to NASCAR racing. And I don't think anybody wants to have balance of performance introduced to NASCAR and have to sort of regulate that on a week by week basis. One week, the Fords get hit with a BOP because we're going to a short track. The next week, the Chevys get hit because we're going to a mile and a half. And the week after that, Toyota gets hit because we're going to a super speedway or whatever. I don't think anybody wants to have to do that. I don't want to make videos about the BOP changing each and every week when we go from track to track. So I hope that's not what happens, but we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, there's still going to be some sort of new energy formula coming to NASCAR at some point in the future. NASCAR, of course, explored EVs and they test ran and built a proof of concept. That's never going to race in the Cup Series. It's never going to take place uh, of the current internal combustion v8 in the cup series just not going to happen there are rumors that nascar could be exploring maybe running a one-off race or something with like dana white's company that does the uh, nitro cross with travis pastrana maybe that happened in the future maybe not i don't think people are going to be that interested and it's going to be on rumble which nobody will watch at all the idea of them going to hydrogen power has been floated as well nascar of course did go over to japan at the end of 2023 and took a look at hydrogen power and honestly Sounds a lot like an internal combustion gasoline powered engine. So there's, if you want to switch to that, totally fine. NASCAR did also mention that they're looking at alternative fuels, um, biofuels, which is something that we've seen a lot of Formula One teams start to experiment with. We've seen a lot of uh, other, Goodwood uh, has seen a number of cars go up the hill with um, biofuel in it. I think that's a future for, for NASCAR. Roger Penske, for as outdated as I think he is, he did mention that as well for IndyCar, and I think that's probably the step in the right direction. If we need to go, you know, zero uh, percent carbon footprint, then that's the best path to do it at this time. So, to recap, everything's going to be fine. We're still going to have good racing. The V8's not dying yet. Could it eventually? Yes. I mean, all good things come to an end. I'm not happy about it. I would like to keep the V8. I'm going to go out and start to just collect V8 cars uh, just so I can have them and store them in my garage. But times are changing. It has to make sense for the OEM. The only reason we get to have racing is because OEMs want to be in it, right? They're the ones that are footing the bill. Obviously, teams foot the bill as well. But without OEM partnership, a lot of these series don't exist. So they kind of have to cater to what OEMs want at the time. And maybe it is going down to naturally, not a naturally aspirated, but down to a V6 tur turbo or twin turbo or however you want to, you know, um, formulate that. So we'll wait and see. Don't freak out. Let me know in the comments if you're okay. If you need to talk, I'm here for you. Like and subscribe to the podcast. Podcast. Like and subscribe to the channel. I keep saying podcast. Do I need to start a podcast? Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.